Hey guys, Brian here. Welcome back to uh, Not Even In The Shop. I had to reshoot this one. So uh, this is a video pertaining to my Dodge Crew Cab conversion I did about two years ago. And this is kind of a asking for help video or see if anybody's got any ideas or suggestions or uh, I've got an electronic problem with it that's been reoccurring with the voltage regulators failing to charge. Uh, I've put probably six of them on in two years. Uh, I mean, most of them are all under warranty. Uh, they got a year warranty, so bumper to bumper, you know, you just go in there and it's a standard regulator. They're like $20 list price. And uh, go in there and get another one and put it on there, but uh, for whatever reason, they they quit. Well, I had one that stuck overcharged. It was totally discharging as hard as it could go all the time, boiled the battery over. And the rest of them have just quit charging going along. And every time you can take it off, put a new one on, and boom, it'll go back to charging. And it's usually good for a month or two, and then it quits again. So let's take a look at uh, the truck and the regulator and see if y'all get any ideas. I said, I can't figure out what would be causing them to fail besides, you know, maybe they're just uh, inferior componentry. I'm not familiar. I know I've used these regulators clear back probably into the 60s. I've got other trucks that got them on them and never had a problem at them. So I don't know why this truck has a problem with it. I did have a Chrysler one on there for a while and it lasted like six months before it quit. So let's check it out. Take a look. Okay, so here is the known problem. See that? We've got like 10 volts. Because this thing has decided to quit charging again. No start. So I have to give it a jump. This is the problem. Some of you older Chrysler aficionados will recognize this as the voltage regulator. And I've put probably six of these on this truck since I did the conversion two years ago. And they've all failed for various reasons. Uh, one locked in overcharged and cooked the battery. And the rest of them have all just quit charging. This one was the genuine made in USA Chrysler one that I paid like $45 for. The rest of them are like 20 bucks from AutoZone made in China's. This one lasted the longest. I got like six months out of this one probably before it gave up. Still not very good. I would expect uh, these to not fail. All this is is it's got a, a voltage feedback wire that tells it how much it's putting out. And then it's got a ground wire for the field of the alternator in order to make it start charging. So all you got to do is ground it, and the truck will charge. I have no idea why these keep failing. And I've thought about if I could put a relay in here to isolate this, but I would say let this control the relay on and off, and then just ground out the relay through the through the terminals on it but I bet it would burn the relay up because it probably cycles on and off too much because I assume this cycles uh, a lot of times to control the voltage to try and maintain equal output I uh, don't know what's in this I tried to look in here I thought maybe I'd find something burned or in here give a clue as to what fails so I might get a drill and drill this off and take it apart and see if there's anything visible on the other side. But for now, let's, uh, let's jump this thing, check under the hood. Well, we've got a randomly charging condition here now. It wasn't charging at all. And I've got the cut up voltage regulator on there. And yeah, I went back to not charging. be able to hear me over the truck. The truck's pretty loud. Normally this 
ground through those rivets in the case there. But I just got to ground with this jumper wire. charge. Turn the headlights on. Discharge. Well, there's the needle with the semi-working one. Stay still unless you rev it up. You might say, well, maybe it's a field problem. Doing okay now. There it goes, jumping. So it's erratic anyway. But let me hook it just straight up to the field and see if it's still erratic, so it's in the alternator or if it's a regulator doing it. Alright, so if I just straight up ground it out, that's what it's like. It's charging hard and it's charging steady. like to me the alternator's good. I mean it'll charge its butt off when it's grounded out like it's supposed to on the field. So I think it's just in those regulators. Let's take a closer look at that. Alright so let's take a look at this. This is the regulator. This is the component that actually does the switching, from what I can tell, what turns the regulator or grounds the field out from looking at the circuitry on the back side because you got ground here and here through the rivets. This is the wire coming from the alternator itself. So obviously this side here is grounded and this side over here must switch it to connect these two together for it to charge and this is the sense wire which is feeding out here to who knows what uh, looks like it goes to this this long black thing I don't know if that's a diode or what I'm not an electronics guru. Machines are my thing, so. Looks like the, the power signal must go through that. Uh, I'll guess it's a diode, maybe. Since it's coming off this side of what hooks that up. Looks like then uh, the other component here on the switching side would be that. Looks like the other component there is that black thing. Second. 
don't see any ohm symbols on or anything to determine what that is. Where's your good view of the goodies? So maybe some of you gurus can tell me what's going on here. I said, no, this is in the tech manual. It's not considered something you would be working on. But it's been a problem, so I need to do something about it. So if you think that the idea of putting the relay on here would work, it wouldn't just burn up the relay, then I may just try that route because that would be fairly simple to do. I'm not sure why after cutting all this off, Initially, it didn't work when I hooked it up, and then after fooling around with it, when I jumped across the switch set with my knife blade, uh, after I did that, it started working again. So it's like this quit making contact inside or something, and it had to get uh, toggled back loose for it to, to close back in again and start working. But uh, this was working when I took it off this last time, but. This is the American-made one that had lasted the longest. I don't know if the guts and the Chinese ones look any different, but uh, it's apparently not very robust because it's been a problem. There's the info on the back. It says 1-D CE94V-D 0313 and 717-483. And I don't believe it was in the ground because like I said I had a good ground and I was even grounded here. And like I said it didn't start working until I jumped across this and then it went back to work. And the only thing I saw that looked a little funny was that component there. Who knows what that is. It just looks like a washer with a lead silver soldered each side of it. Well, so there's no markings on it. So he has that in the path. Goes to nothing here. Mm, goes. To, it gets a. It gets the signal voltage. It gets the signal voltage through here. And it's gating to that. Just the bottom end. Of that. Send powers up these. So I don't know, I'm not even gonna bother trying to figure out any more on it. Look his stuff up in a book and see what it is, but like I said, it's not my thing. And even if I did, I wouldn't know what to do with it. So uh, I don't know where I don't have any of these components, or I so really can't even tell what's bad. So I don't know what I would replace to make it work, or to work more robustly. Besides, maybe this piece, and I don't know if we can get a, a better one of those, and I could solder it in here, or what the deal is. But uh, Obviously, that's the main deal here because that's what's doing the grounding. It's the only thing hooked into it. So that's that for this uh, shout out deal. If, like I said, if anybody's got any ideas on this or recommendations or I don't know what the real old ones of these were. I think Chrysler's been using this basic thing since the 60s. Uh, I don't know what they were like inside. If I could get an old one and maybe it would be more robust and work longer than these but it's a really annoying problem because you never know when you're going somewhere if your truck's going to quit charging while you're getting there and it's not a huge deal because i always carry jumper cables so i can get it started back but when it happens at night time and your lights quit working then it's a big deal and especially if you're pulling a gooseneck trailer and it pulls you know it's got several lights on it so uh, it doesn't take long to run your battery down when it quits charging and then you got a problem, so you got to stop and do something. Uh, usually, what it amounts to is 
putting a jumper wire on the field wire and driving five miles up the road until your battery starts pulling over and then pulling the jumper wire back off and driving another five or ten miles up the road until you start getting discharged and then hooking the wire back up again and manually doing it. I mean, I guess it, it would be common, but I guess I could put a toggle switch in here to turn it on and off with, but I really don't know what's causing these to fail. Uh, I've got several trucks of heavies on them and I've never had a problem with any of the others. Uh, of course, I don't want to take one of them off one of them and put it on this truck and junk it out because it's got some kind of issue that's causing this or maybe these are just all junk. I don't know. So let me know what you think and thanks for watching and thanks for subscribing. And I hope you found this interesting. Not as good as most of my videos probably as far as that goes, but uh, uh, this one's for me.